This is the story of a shipment gone wrong. Horribly wrong. Usually when there are problems with a shipment in the underworld, distrust starts to build and someone has to be held responsible. Most of the time, a wave of attacks on each other follow. But this time, it was not just a wave. This was a tsunami. The feud that followed after this missing shipment will literally take us across the entire globe with many intriguing twists and turns, as well as victims in places that are totally unexpected. Before we dive into the feud, let's see what sparked it in the first place. In the summer of 2014, a significant event in the world of international drug trafficking occurred that would have far-reaching and unbelievable consequences. On the 28th of April 2014, the Nor One boat was on its way from Dubai to Greece. In the Gulf of Oman, a fishing trawler sailed next to it. Hours long, multiple men moved packages from their fishing trawler onto the Nor One. Step one, successful. Those packages, 2,000 kilos worth of pure heroin. Years of preparation had gone into the shipment, and it finally was set in motion. The heroin belonged to the group led by Urfi Si. Other key figures in the operation included Naji Sharifi Zindashti from Iran, Oran Yu from Turkey, Ali Akgun from Amsterdam, and Metin Y from Rotterdam. Ali and Metin each had a stake of 300 kilos in the shipment. Zindashti had a larger unknown share, with the rest belonging to Urfi and Orhan. As part of their preparation for the shipment, with a street value of over 100 million euros, the group had already spent millions to set up money laundering schemes to launder the proceeds of their goods. They rented a large warehouse nearby to stock the goods and distribute them further down to the Netherlands, Belgium, and the United Kingdom. They bought things like forklifts to move the goods, and they even bought a truck with secret compartments to move it. After finishing this thorough preparation, they were ready to receive the shipment. And then, something totally unexpected happened. As the shipment was nearing its destination in the port of Greece in early June, an insider knocked on the door of a Greek police station. Without any hesitation, this person tipped off the shipment and said that there was a half a ton of heroin coming in. Why would someone tip off the shipment? Was it more beneficial for them to see the shipment fail? Many questions arise. In the following days, the shipment arrived in the port and was partially offloaded and brought to the warehouse. By then, Greek police had their eyes set on the shipment and followed every move. After seeing the goods being moved to the warehouse, they set up an operation the next day. On the 12th of June, around 9 p.m., 30 armed agents surrounded the warehouse. They barged into the warehouse and found six men among hundreds of kilos of product. An officer on site recalled that the sniffer dogs went absolutely crazy upon entering the warehouse. After further investigation, they were led to two other warehouses that acted as stash houses. Here, they seized a several hundred kilos more. Over the next days, a lot of men were arrested for their involvement. The Nor One, that was still in the port with plenty of kilos on it, was also raided. The entire crew and the owner of the boat were arrested. By August, more than 30 people were arrested for their alleged involvement in the shipment. Just like that, Greek police had disturbed the biggest known heroin transport ever. And that is where the story finally begins. We all know that whenever a shipment is seized or lost, turmoil starts to build let alone a shipment of two tons of heroin. No one could imagine what would happen after this though, no one. The majority of the men that were arrested were nothing more than foot soldiers. Urfi, Zindashti, Orhan, Ali, and Metin remained out of sight. They were all on high alert, and as time passed, suspicions arose. Someone had to have tipped off the shipment. It just had to be. They were too well prepared for it to be discovered this easy. So what was the real reason why the shipment was tipped off? Pay close attention, because it is going to be wild and different names will be mentioned. Urfi's men were not friends with each other. Ali and Orhan had problems with each other and it's believed that Ali together with Zindashti tipped away the shipment so they could point their fingers to Orhan and have a valid reason to take him out. An email in a police report showed that they also suspected Zindashti of tipping away the shipment. Orhan in his turn heard about this plan and accused Zindashti of tipping off the shipment. Well, we all know that this kind of situation where people start pointing fingers towards each other are a recipe for disaster. A furious Orhan set his sight on Zindashti. He wanted to get rid of him and hired two hitmen to take Zindashti out. The plan was to do so while he was driving in his white Porsche Cayenne, stop right next to the car, and unleash the weapon and flee. That was the job. In September 2014, the two men did exactly that. But little did they know, Zindashti was not driving in his car that day. It was his daughter and his nephew. When Urfi heard about this incident, he was fuming. Urfi has always been an old school kingpin. Business goes first and women and kids are forbidden territory. 
If you have a problem with someone, you deal with them directly, not via a terrible action like this. Orfi dropped Orhan from his organization and wanted nothing to do with him anymore. Over the next four years, it would only get worse, as the feuds spiraled out of control. It was a sure thing that Zindashti would avenge his daughter and take revenge. Those two men that botched the job, they initially fled to the Netherlands and Belgium. On the 22nd of December 2014, they returned to Turkey. As if it were meant to be, they were at the other end of a weapon themselves, not too far away from where they shot Zindashti's daughter and nephew. They did not survive. Just three days later, it was Ali Akgun's turn. While sat in his Bentley in traffic in Istanbul, he was followed by a man on a motorcycle. The men on the bike drove up next to Ali and unleashed their weapon. In a desperate attempt to flee, Ali hit the gas and launched the Bentley. It was already too late and he crashed. Orhan finally got one of his enemies down. On the 28th of August, 2015, Orhan was arrested in Amsterdam after being internationally wanted. Many had thought he would be jailed for a long time. However, it was actually quite the opposite. After just three days, he was released. What he most likely did not know was that the Dutch police did so in cooperation with the Turkish police. The Turkish police force shadowed Orhan for weeks, watching all his movements to see who his contacts were and to collect evidence. After several months, he was arrested again and extradited to Turkey. Him being behind bars did not mean that the feud was over. Far from that, actually. To send him a message, his lawyer got whacked. The lawyer himself had already warned the courtroom days prior, I might not make it to another hearing. For half a year, it was silent. The next incident would take us to a very common but unexpected place. It was early May 2016 in Dubai. Zindashti was still seeking revenge for what had happened to his daughter and believed Satin K, who was involved in the seized shipment, was also involved in the hit on his daughter and nephew. Zindashti hired two hitmen to do the job, Orosman Jr. Garcia Arevalo and Harpreet Singh Maju. Both men were Vancouver residents and allegedly members of a notorious gang called Brothers Keepers. On the 4th of May, they flew into Dubai geared up and immediately went on to do what they came for. Satin K was sitting in his car in one of the most luxurious neighborhoods of Dubai as the two men pulled up right next to him and blasted away with their silenced weapons. Satin did not stand a chance and the two men sped off. They immediately went to the airport and before the Dubai police force could even identify the suspects, they were long gone. Job succeeded. Doing something like this in Dubai is absolutely unheard of. They have high-tech surveillance throughout the city and their punishments for criminals are no joke. You'd think twice to commit a crime over there, let alone pull off a hit in broad daylight. Days after the incident, Dubai authorities informed their Canadian counterparts that the hitmen had flown to British Columbia. Seven days later, a farmer in British Columbia would get the shock of his life as he was walking through his blueberry patch. There laid Orosman, struck multiple times. Sometime later, Harpreet's remains were also found burned out in a car in Agassiz. Are you still with me? This feud now also had its chapter half a world away. The exact reason for these two incidents, that has never become clear, as the suspects have never been caught. Sources have said that after the successful hit, Orosman and Harpreet were acting cocky, portraying themselves as international top hitmen and demanding a promotion in their own organization to reflect their new status. Their behavior greatly annoyed those around them and is most likely the reason for their demise. By April 2018, 13 people connected to the Nor One had been taken out. Four others had died under suspicious circumstances. Zindashti, who was still a free man, would be arrested in 2018 too. However, he was released relatively quickly afterwards due to his extensive power and bribery. He also was not done getting his revenge. He still wanted Orhan the most, but he was still in jail, thus way harder to get to. Orhan's brother Ilhan, however, was a free man. Zindashti had him removed off the playing field after sending two hitters to Baghdad Avenue in Istanbul, where unsuspecting Ilhan sat. Zindashti is a person who gets rid of his enemies without hesitation, Zira Ozdilek said, a Turkish news reporter. Should I make this story even a bit more complicated? As this entire story unfolded, many more interesting things happened in the background. Remember the 30 people that were arrested in Greece after the shipment was seized? Three weeks after the seizure, a Dutch woman visited some of those arrested in jail, saying she was their legal counsel. After suspicion arose, Dutch authorities tapped her phone. They discovered that this woman left behind 200,000 euros in cash to keep the imprisoned men quiet. As time went on, one of those men imprisoned for getting the product of the shipment died of heart failure. Prison authorities did not bother to open an investigation. Then nine months later, the mechanic of Norwan died of heart failure too. Once again, no investigation. 
In May 2017, a prosecutor involved in the case was granted round-the-clock security as she was observed by several men with bad intentions. Other members of the judiciary and Coast Guard involved in the case received bullets in their mail. In June 2018, a police informant that was working on the case died in a highly suspicious car crash. Multiple researchers that were investigating the Nor One had a firearm pulled on them. Someone did not want anyone to talk. This was the story of the failed shipment of the Nor One. I hope you managed to stay with me through all the different names, countries, and incidents. If you have enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment with your thoughts or feedback, and subscribe if you have not already. Many more videos to come. See you in the next one.